Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and this is my series of tutorial videos on how to use SPSS to work with data. In this video, I'm going to show you how to conduct and interpret a two-stage cluster analysis. As always, we'll be using the YouTube Viewing Habits survey that I created, and you can find both a link to the data file and a video tutorial of the data below. In previous videos, I used hierarchical cluster analysis and k-means cluster analysis to define clusters from a set of data in our data set. In this video, I'm going to focus on two-step cluster analysis. Now, there's trade-offs between using all of these. One of the big benefits of two-step cluster analysis is that it's going to automatically determine the number of clusters for us, as well as allow us to use both continuous and categorical variables. On the other hand, there's some pretty strong assumptions that two-step cluster analysis has. For instance, your continuous variables have to be normally distributed, your categorical variables need to be multinomial distributed, and all of your variables have to be completely independent. Beyond that, the data that you actually feed into this, the order in which the data are sorted matters. So for instance, here in my data set, the ordering is just participant number, which is pretty random since I don't have any prediction about the order in which participants completed the study. But if there's any chance that there's some sort of systematic pattern to your data, that is sorted, that's gonna be a problem for two-stage clustering. And of course, to me, the biggest problem is that it's very black box. I like hierarchical and k-means because I can actually visualize that dendrogram to see what the tree branching diagram looks like, and then I have a pretty good understanding of how the variables play out in cluster analysis. So which one you choose to use is really up to you. This video, of course, is gonna be an emphasis on two-stage cluster analysis. Now, we're gonna be using the same variables that we used in the previous video, and we'll see how that result compares to using a hierarchical and k-means cluster analysis. And those variables are right here. These are our importance measures. And so how do we do this? Well, up under Analyze, Classify, Two-Step Cluster, there's a few things that we need to consider. So first of all, you see that here we can define our categorical variables, and here we can define our continuous variables. Well, in this particular case, we don't have categorical variables, so we'll skip that. And we'll take all of our importance measures and put them into the continuous variable box. Another important distinction is right here. This is the number of clusters. We can allow this algorithm to determine the number of clusters for us up to a maximum as defined right here of 15, though of course we can change that maximum to whatever is appropriate. Alternatively, we can specify a specific fixed number of clusters, like five, but I won't do that here. I'll actually let the algorithm determine how many clusters we're gonna have. And under output, one of the things that's actually most useful is to add this right here, the create cluster membership variable. That, just like with our k-means or our hierarchical, where we can actually create a new variable that is identifying each row of data as to which cluster it belongs to, that'll do the same thing here in the two-step cluster. So we click continue, and then we click OK, and that's it. Now, unlike our other analyses, we actually have to go into this model, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, to see any of the results. But the very first thing we see is right here, the silhouette measure of cohesion and separation. Basically what this is saying is simultaneously measuring how similar the data points are within each cluster and also how different each cluster is from one another. And SPSS very conveniently labels these as poor, fair, or good. In this particular case, we have what's called a fair result, which means that the clustering isn't bad, but it's not fantastic either. So there's plenty of variation within the cluster, and some of the clusters might be similar to one another more so than we'd like. If you ever find yourself in this poor case, basically that's a time where you might say cluster analysis is not appropriate for the data that you have. Now, of course, we're typically looking for this good criteria, but you get what you get with real data. So to actually see the results, we have to double click into this model. So I'm gonna do that right now. And a new window pops up. This is now the model viewer. This is something we haven't seen before in any of our videos, but this is gonna give us all the results from this two-stage cluster analysis. And the first thing we see is our model summary that we saw a moment ago. We also see some general characteristics about our clusters. Well, there's two of them. Cluster one represents 35% or so of the data. Cluster two is 64%, so we have a good sense of how big those clusters are. And if you recall, that's actually very similar to what we saw when we ran our k-means analysis in the previous video. But there's a lot more that we can dig into. So for instance, if we right here under view, change this from model summary to clusters, here we see the value of each variable within each cluster. If I hover over this, this tells me that the question, how many views the video has, has a very high importance, and I'll describe that in a moment. And the average value for everyone in this cluster is 1.51. That's different from cluster two, where the average value is 3.08. Well, that importance measure is actually how this table is sorted, with the highest importance being at the top, and the lowest importance being at the bottom. There's also a nice color coding where the darker color signifies importance. Importance in this case is saying, how much does this variable influence the clustering solution? Well, in this case, this variable is highly influential, and this variable down here, what the video was about, is minimally influential. And we can visualize that. In fact, if we change our view on the right over here to predictor importance, 
it tells us right here the ordering of importance. There's also the slider scale, which if you move all the way to the left, will just show all the variables. You might want to say, hey, I only want to look at the most important ones, so categorize it like this. And so in this case, these variables, how many views the video has, the color used in the video thumbnail, and how attractive is the video thumbnail, those seem to be the most important variables in determining cluster membership in this model. But there's still other things we can look at. So if we kind of scroll back up to the top here, one of the things we might want to look at is this. If I click into a cell, it'll automatically change this over to cell distribution. If it doesn't, you can just select it from here. And what this is saying is the distribution of responses for individuals in cluster one to this question as compared to this lighter color, which is the overall average for all respondents. So you can see, for instance, that how many views the video has. Cluster one is actually underrepresenting the number of responses for option five, four, three, and two, and maybe a little bit one. In other words, it's shifted to the left. And we see that that, in fact, is the case. The mean here is very low. It's 1.51. Now I can, of course, look at what happens in cluster two. Well, in cluster two, we see that there's many more responses for option three, and we're underrepresenting ones and twos as compared to those total population distributions. And of course, the mean there is much higher. It's 3.08. And we can do that for each of our variables as we click through, we can see what those look like. Beyond cell distributions, we can also look at cluster comparisons. Now here we have to select two different clusters, and I'll expand this a little bit so you can see better. These are box and whisker plots, which look to see where the median and of course the whiskers, the 25th and 75th percentile are for each of our clusters. Here the light blue is cluster one, and the red is cluster two. So we see for this question, how many views the video has, there's a large difference in the median across those two clusters. And then we can scroll down and see how that differs across these different dimensions. And then we can use this information to better define what our clusters are. So for instance, here's one that doesn't really seem to matter that much, how accurately the title captures the actual content of the video. Those medians are exactly the same, which suggests to me that this is not a particularly important dimension in determining the cluster membership, and that's the case. We saw that here, right? If we scroll down to the bottom, we saw that the importance on this question is only 0.1 from a scale of zero being totally unimportant to one being incredibly important. Now, there are a few other options like how you can sort this information and you're free to play with that as well. The only other one that I find particularly useful if I scroll back up here is this one. This is actually a distribution of responses plotted as a histogram for each of my variables. And I find that particularly useful because I can quickly visualize what those differences look like and where those differences exist. Other than that, the only thing we might care about is if we exit this model viewer, if we go back to our data set, we now have a new variable called TSC, two-step cluster, and this is identifying which cluster each response belongs to. So for example, if I click into it, here this person belongs to cluster two, this person belongs to cluster one, this person belongs to cluster two, and so on. So that's it for two-step cluster analysis. Again, what's worth noting is this is a very quick and easy way to conduct a cluster analysis, but I don't love it for its black boxy type feature. I don't have a good intuition of where those results come from, and I don't have a good intuition of whether the solution of two clusters is particularly robust, or maybe instead we should be thinking about three clusters as a possible solution. For that, I like hierarchical and k-means, and of course, I'll link to those videos below. That's it for this video. I hope you found this useful, and if you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be sure to reply as quickly as I can. Aside from these tutorials, I'm on a mission to equip everyone with the information they need to thrive in our data-rich world. If you'd like to learn not just the mechanics of analysis, which these video tutorials focus on, but also learn the intuition behind the analysis you're performing, I strongly suggest you check out the other intuition-focused videos on this channel where I take the jargon out of statistics and data science and help you build a deep, intuitive understanding behind all the analysis that you're performing. I'll put a link below to a playlist of the videos that focus on just this. Finally, please take a moment to like the video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that I put out. Thanks for watching.